I want to summarize a bit of the last 10 years because I've been I've been making videos and I've been a content creator for over a decade now. And I want to summarize a bit of the, the, the moments that we've had over the past decade. But the first year is not going to be just 2010 because not a lot happened for me in 2010, at least with uh, videos and everything of the like. I'm going to take everything that happened from 2000. 7 to 2010, and we'll talk about it a little bit. So here's the very first video on my channel. And then I believe this is just, this is the first video on my channel. This is just me and Steve playing Third Strike on the Anniversary Collection on PlayStation 2, I believe it was. And that's it. It's just, oh, we can put up match footage on YouTube. That's really cool. Before, we didn't even have a place to put up match footage. That's nothing too special. I, I And I believe the first few are just an extension of that. Like nothing in these is too particularly crazy. And I think this might be me recording a replay, which is even funnier. I believe I'm, I'm the purple Ken. Yeah, I, I don't know if Steve did short, short, super. Ooh, wait, wait for it. Okay, that's all I got. That's all I got, some old shaky cam footage. This one is pretty special because this was the first time that Street Fighter 4 was playable to the public in the USA. This is Comic-Con 2000, 2008. So it's nothing special. I think I went like two and two in this little Comic-Con tournament or something like that. If anyone remembers, the, the hype for Street Fighter 4 was absolutely infectious. It was that Street Fighter was dead. Capcom fighting games were in fact dead. And just the fact that they existed again in some way, in some fashion, there was a brand new fighting game. The hype was insane. So much so that I dedicated every waking moment, if it was available, to playing Street Fighter 4. Like, I, I just wanted to get more hands-on time with the game and just figure stuff out. This is very early stages of content creation. I'm essentially holding a camera up at a screen, a CRT, and then just letting it up and uploading it. That's all it is. So the next opportunity I had after the Street Fighter 4 tournament at Comic-Con was, who remembers, and I've, I think very few of you would, who remembers the Sneaker Pips concert. I don't even know if this music's gonna get me flagged. But for some reason, in the middle of Los Angeles, Capcom had a concert for Sneaker Pimps. I don't even know what a Sneaker Pimp is. I have no idea. But I'm sure they're super cool. I'm sure that's it's really cool to pimp a sneaker. There is something else that happens in this around this time frame. This is the point where I'm feeling motivated. Street Fighter has fired a creative light under my balls, and we're gonna have to do something about it. I am going to need to express myself, not through drawing, which is what I did almost all the time, not through art. I need to make a video. <laughs> a video. <laughs> oh God, I'm not ready to watch this. I'm not ready to watch this. This is my first time ever video editing anything. I'll say right now that I seem to have regressed in my video making capabilities. The audio's all over the place, and all it was was just like random clips of like the Sneaker Pibs concert and a few other moments of me playing Street Fighter 4 before it was out. And did you see that? Did you see that transition? It's really bad. It's not even an AMV. It's so bad. And here's one thing I'm gonna tell anyone, because I've I've been doing this this whole video shit for over almost a decade full-time, you're gonna suck at everything you start doing. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, no matter what you do, no matter how many star wipes or fade to blacks or weird shit you're gonna have, you're gonna suck ass at it. It's gonna be bad. Did this lend me my work on KI? It might have had something to do with it. And this is the this is the first time I ever fired up Adobe Premiere. I didn't even know what the hell resolution meant. So this is this is by my consideration to be really probably like my first video, you know? And believe it or not, for a very long time, this view count hasn't changed. Like this this got 42,000 views in 2009, 2008 when it came out, and that was incredible. For years, this was the most watched video on my my whole channel. And I was like, oh my god, yeah, I have a YouTube... Yo, I got a YouTube video. It's got 35,000 views. I was just so excited about Street Fighter 4 and that Capcom fighting games were back that I just wanted to do something. So 
So I did something. The Street Fighter 4 obsession keeps going because SF4 shows up at arcades in Southern California. So this place was the, the pinnacle mecca of Street Fighter in the entire US. And I was very lucky that with a little bit of playtime I had from like the Sneaker Pimps concert, from the, 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 the previous like tournament that I went to where the game was first playable, that I spent a lot of time at this arcade. Oh my God, that might be, that, that's definitely me right there. Um, I spent a lot of time at this arcade playing the shit out of this game. And it was, it was incredible. Someone had a piece of paper on a, on a, on a, on a, on a board, like a clipboard. And there was names going down this entire thing on each side to the back page of people waiting in line to play the game. So you had to wait forever. It was an hour and a half to a two hour waiting, waiting period to play Street Fighter 4. Yeah, I think Gutex might have been manning the clipboard. No shit, he might have been the one that was doing it. Street Fighter 4 at this point gets like a few more outings and I continually keep going back to Super Arcade as much as possible to to make these videos and to keep going. Do you see how many matches? This is my early video game content creation. Do you see how many matches are in here? It's insane. Because I played it a lot, I started to... Does anyone know what like a live journal is? Back in the dough, we didn't have vlogs. Instead, we had blogs. <laughs> so Capcom Unity is this little old... Uh, little website that, that Capcom had. I don't even know if Capcom community is still going. I don't even know if it's still a thing. This is my old Capcom community posts that I had way, way back when. And these were a couple of just detailed recollections of what the hell's going on. Unfortunately, one that I would really like to include in here is the Fight Club, the LA Fight Club, where we got to jam on Street Fighter 4 a whole bunch. It was, just, it was just this dark alley, dingy looking place that they just jammed Street Fighter cabinets into. And this is gone because G4 TV is gone, but G4 TV covered it like it was a news event. So the Fight Club was dope because we just got to finally play this game. Let's see if we can find this G4 video. So the cool part is that we like, I think I'm over here playing. We dominated a corner of this place. We took it over. And that no one ever went over there. I was like, those guys, those guys are on like 15 game win streaks. Fuck them. The leave them alone. We don't want to deal with that shit. And for some people, a really, really ignore that person you just play. saw. Ignore that person you just saw. Uh, visually describing how to do a colonoscopy. <laughs> ignore, ignore. Go back. Ignore what you just saw. But all this stuff, like here's here's here is man. Here's a few of the, the the Capcom folks that I knew from way back in the day. Yeah, I'm like highlighting my YouTube page and shit like that. It's just. This is, this is some old ass lore right here. But it doesn't even, the thing is it isn't even that old because at this point I had, it's 2008, I'd have been playing Street Fighter 3 competitively as much as possible for about five years. The first time I played competitive fighting games was 1995 with Killer Instinct, so. And then I got to show off some, some artwork. I think there's, everyone was so friggin' excited for for Street Fighter. So much so, like I said, I was, I was going to that arcade so much and playing the game. And the biggest thing was, at the arcade, if you kept winning, there was no limit. They actually installed limits onto the machines that if you won too much, they would it would kick you off. So if like, oh, you won 10 games straight, get the hell off the machine. The game would actually say game over and you're done. But before that happened, <laughs> there was pretty much this where I was trying to get as good at the game as possible so I can stay at stay keep get as much experience and this was at Super Arcade one of those nights they pretty much kicked us off until they cut off the power they installed limits at that point where they're like nope you can't play anymore but instead if you were one of the the prestigious few that either went to Dungeon Arcade FFA or Super Arcade if you won 10 games in a row or like 20 games in a row you got a free soda I'd have to get a Dr. Pepper because it was a DP and you just, it was the most delicious fucking soda I've ever had. It was amazing, free soda. Like it was a free fucking soda. But more importantly, there was a list that was taped to the machine on the front of all the people that had acquired the win limit that week. It was a very big goal to not just get the DP, but to also get your name on that list to get your name like, oh, it's like it's like a leaderboard, but a real life leaderboard, which is just pen and paper. So that was a big goal for me personally. Um, going to as many places as possible and playing the holy 
shit out of the game. This was the content years of making videos for Street Fighter 4. This was the beginning of this shit. And that was the majority of my channel for a couple years before 2010. So I think that there is a few videos down here of us and friends playing. Uh, we're playing an early build. I knew a lot of people that were in the industry and that were reviewers and they were reviewing Street Fighter 4. So we would go to their house and then help them with the review process. We would essentially play each other at games. We would just mash games with each other. I recorded a few of that and put it up after the game came out. So this was like a first look at these characters and stuff like that. This is before that, this is before at any point that people were paying attention to YouTube to take videos down. So it was right before the game was coming out. Good Lord, the first time playing Street Fighter 4 online, it's got 47,000 views. It's gotta be good, right? Oh God, it's, it's me recording the screen with the same camera that I think I recorded the Third Strike match videos. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, Ken's got hit confirmed still. Ooh! Medium DP'd windmill kick in Street Fighter 4 online? See, the thing is, at this point, Street Fighter 4's netcode is actually pretty good. I'm doing commentary? <laughs> I didn't even realize! Yeah, that was online. I didn't see much lag, and it's a whole Pacific Ocean separating us, so... Yeah, Street Fighter 4 is bitch and netcode. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, no! Okay, okay. Perspective! Perspective! The best Capcom online fighting games we had at the time was CVS 2 and Third Strike, and it was trash! It was, it was terrible. It was terrible. Perspective here, people, okay? This is still the 2009s. We haven't even reached into the, the 2010s yet because we're at the, right now, we're at the launch of SF4. I was going to school full time. I was working full time. Like there was a lot of shit. There was a lot of shit happening and I was spending almost every waking moment I could to play SF4. So what happened after this? Um, there's a couple of like old FF11 videos, even though it, it had been like, I think five, no, it had been four years since I was done playing FF11. But for anyone that played FF11, this is gonna be like painfully familiar to a lot of you people. I played at Final Fantasy XI in Japanese because I literally learned Japanese to play this game. This was, this was a very large portion of my life next to playing Third Strike was FF11. And I can tell you for a lot of people, FF11 and fighting games were like married. For some reason, they complemented each other very well in the early 2000s, extremely well. Another goofy thing happens. Capcom is like, yo, we want to have a uh, a speed run competition, a Lost Planet 2 speed run. They released a demo for Lost Planet 2 and I had recently acquired because I was sick of recording footage off screen with a camera. I'm like, you know what? I want my YouTube videos to look better. I'm going to buy an HD PVR, and we won the Lost Planet 2 speedrun competition. We glitched the shit out of this demo, dude. But we killed this guy unnaturally fast. Oh my god, it looks terrible. I don't even know how to set it to 720. This is actually before YouTube supported 720p. So that was fun. I can't remember. Chat room, the internet was a different time. Anyway, at this point, I was already playing a lot of another little game called Call of Duty 4 and actually competing at Call of Duty 4, going to local tournaments and we won a few and it was fun. But I just threw up some old Call of Duty clips on here because that is, I just had some pretty damn good games. And here, and here's where you can actually see a very, very big jump. Damn, this is running at 60. So YouTube didn't get 60 FPS until 2014. But if you uploaded videos at 60, YouTube still remembered that they were running at 60, which is dope, man. But yeah, Call of Duty 4, I really enjoyed Halo 3, but when, when COD 4 came out, oh God, dude, I was in love. I couldn't, we, this game was just the greatest shit. And everyone knows it. Everyone knows how Call of Duty 4 changed the industry. It was incredible. But at this time I was also playing Street Fighter 4 still, throwing up random clips every once in a while. Jesus, this actually looks watchable. This actually looks moderately watchable. I don't think it's running at 60. This is before I learned how to turn off the uh, 
the motion blur in Sony Vegas. So this is the biggest and most unfortunate thing for a lot of content creators. Sony Vegas was the easiest editing software to use. And unfortunately, a lot of every a lot of people's old videos when they edited them didn't realize that Vegas put in a natural motion blur for everything. And this really made a lot of videos look like shit, which is unfortunate now because they haven't, it, it's made them not age well by comparison. Here's the last time Marvel 2 came out, 2009. It's been 11 years now since Marvel 2 came out. So we're getting close to the end of 2009 here. And it's just more Street Fighter 4, more Street Fighter 4. This is an old, this is an old compilation. This was back, this was back when the thought, just the thought of rocking multiple stun grenades in a shotgun was weird and alien because you weren't running an MP5 or an M16. What is he doing? That's impossible. How could they play the game in a different way? Just one of the, one of the few music videos uh, that ended up making for Call of Duty 4. Good video. Anyway, so yeah, just recording matches, playing online, no commentary, and then Modern Warfare 2 comes out and it's possibly one of the most hyped games ever. So I threw up some videos a little bit early and Activision came after my ass. Unfortunately got the videos removed, which sucks. But I was the first one to get a nuke in Modern Warfare 2 and put up a video of it. Can I say that I was the first one in the entirety of playing the game to do it? No. And I also technically cheated because no one else had the game yet. Very few people indeed had the game. At least it's back. I had to work my ass off to get this video back. People didn't even know what the hell the nuke was. So at this point, I see some other YouTubers. We're still in 2010. Now here's what I tell- here's when I tell you that no matter what you do, you're gonna suck at it when you start. And that's hard for a lot of people to, un to understand. It took me years to find a voice, right? To actually find a voice when speaking and understand how to manipulate a microphone with your voice in some way. So this is the example I get to show you now, which is preserved in history in the last year that we're covering now. The first time I had ever provided commentary over match footage. Welcome to the first part of an introductory series, How to Dominate in Modern Warfare 2. Uh, the goal of this series is to hopefully let players level up their game, improve kill-death ratios, or essentially become a better Modern Warfare 2 player. My name is Maximilian. I put out some videos originally when the game first came out, uh, including one of the first legitimate nuke videos. Maybe if we skip, maybe if we go forward, it'll get a bit better. So as long as you're covering these points, you can maximize your kill-death ratio and be a legitimate help to your team. How many people watch this? Oh my god! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! I'm not too sure you sound disinterested? I... I'm not, that. though. But you, you gotta realize, it takes effort to sound interested in something. It takes effort to make yourself sound like you have infatuation with anything. And this was like the beginning when you're making YouTube videos and you're like, oh, I can do that. How the hell does this bitch ass have a million subscribers? What is this mother for doing? He's getting... 50,000 views per video. What is he doing that I can't do? I could do that. I could do it. No problem. And the problem is, in that train of thinking, which all of us have gone through at some point in our lives, what you're not seeing is all the time that has led up to the point of which that video's creation, how much time they put into expanding their audience, how much time they put into making videos to make it better and better and better. All you're looking at is just the video, and you're like, I can do that. I can. Become YouTube famous. <laughs> Everyone goes through that mistake at some point in their life. And they're like, I'm gonna spend $2,000 on a streaming computer. I'm gonna spend $1,500 on editing software. And we're gonna get, I'm gonna learn how to edit. I'm gonna clap my hands repeatedly. I'm gonna be rich. It's gonna be crazy. So that was a big error that I that I was doing early on when I was trying to do this, was that you think you're you're on to something like, oh, this is gonna be so sick. But even, even at this point in my career, there was never any future where doing this was going to lead to money in some way. I remember directly thinking when I was at work, at the office, thinking about what videos I was going to make when I went home, just because it was fun and seeing people respond to videos was cool. All I'm telling you, chat, is that just because it looks easy, that is the thing that's hard. The fact that it looks easy, the fact that you're not even in your brain, you're not even seeing how many things can be going wrong. 
that's the part that early in content creation, you can make a definite big problem out of where you're going to be jumping into this thing and spending all this money. And suddenly you're like, oh, God, but I don't know how to do any of this. Oh, God, this suddenly doesn't work bad. This works terribly. Like, what the fuck is going on? It's part of the show that everything just sounds and looks the way it does. And you you do have to learn that through experience. And that's this is the whole process of me, especially revisiting this shit now. This is the process of me learning that. Here is my second attempt at making a commentary for review purpose. I'm like, you know what? I played Street Fighter 4 enough. I played Super Street Fighter 4 enough. I'm probably going to disagree with everything in this review because my perspective is based on Street Fighter 4 online. But... 35 characters, balance changes, and a brand new online... Oh, God! Game. Can Super Street Fighter 4 live up to the hype? Or is it simply just lagging behind? You hear all these other review sites and review channels, and you're just like, man, I could try that. And you're just like, why doesn't it sound as good? Perhaps one of the most important features of any online fighting game is the netcode. How close you can get to simulating a real-life fight with someone that's across the- Chat room, I've been bitching about the netcode since 2010! I've been bitching about the netcode for- I've been- I've been on this- I've been on this journey for 10 years! More than 10 years! I started when CVS2 came out on the original Xbox. I've been doing this shit my whole life! However, in Super Street Fighter 4, whether people are leaving the room, entering the room, or watching your game, it doesn't seem to affect your game at all. It's a really smooth experience. But you start noticing, like, presentation-wise, it's getting a little bit better. There's some transitions to music to sound effects that don't sound absolutely terrible. They actually sound kind of bitchin'. So the editing's getting better. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to act like a human in front of a microphone. Moving forward, later that year, oh god, the sweet baby shows up. E3 2010. It's Marvel time. Oh my god. The first matches of anyone playing Marvel 3, and guess what? It was just Tatsunoko versus Capcom 2. That's all it was. And people were pissed. People were at this E3. So a lot of people complained, and then after after this E3, uh, they changed a lot of stuff. They changed a lot of how the game just basically, a lot of the feel of the characters, the feel of the game got way faster. They really did a number on it from this point until launch in February of the next year. But this was the first chance of like getting actual footage. I think this is like the tail end of the first, the beginning, right? The beginning, because as we get to 2011, this is where shit gets, a, this is where shit gets really hairy. This is where it gets kind of nuts. I can tell you, this is before I did anything professionally. This is before I did anything for money in any way. And by this point, I had already made this many videos. I'd already made probably like 600 videos and I didn't earn a dime out of it. The whole point was just that it's fun. It's fun just to have this outlet to throw shit up and just do stuff. I learned a lot in this time frame, but I also didn't because I wasn't doing anything consistently. I was just like, oh, I just got to try, you know, I just want to, I just want to have an outlet just to do this because I love it. That's the very beginning. It's full of us a lot of general gameplay, some bad commentary, but you have to start somewhere. And I think that's the biggest thing, at least of the 20, the 2010 decades was to remind people that you have to start somewhere. <laughs>